Warning, the information and opinions within are solely the views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. Thank you for listening to or watching the Block Web Beat podcast, recorded on Tuesday the 19th of March at about 6pm AEST. On this week's show, despite widespread crypto market retraction, we'll explore Solana's impressive surge amidst meme coin mania. We're going to dive into Upland's innovative share and build airdrop and celebrate Paris Hilton's metaverse generating $60 million in media adverts. In AI news, we'll look at Apple's negotiations with Google. There's transformative blockchain AI in healthcare and the future shaped by AI and the blockchain convergence. We'll also examine the end of the Starbucks NFT program and the impact of Bitcoin halving on Web3 gaming. Plus, as always, we ground ourselves with some real world insights and a few doses of reality from the meat universe very tragic dose of reality for one of them. All right, let's start off by taking a look at what's currently happening in some of the crypto markets. Uh, went past it. There we go. So this week in the crypto market, we're seeing a significant retreat with the global market cap down 11.9% to 2.43 trillion. Bitcoin's dominance remains relatively steady, making a minor uptick of 0.4%. The mood among investors has shifted with the fear and greed index dropping from an extreme greed level of 92 last week down to 83 this week. Bitcoin and Ethereum have both faced notable declines with Bitcoin dropping 11.5% and Ethereum by a sharper 19.6%. Across the board from WAX to the sandbox, the trend continues downwards with decreases ranging from 17% to over 40% in some of the individual cryptos that I that I um, have in my bags or that I cover in this show. In stark contrast, of course, Solana stands out with an impressive surge of 16.4% suggesting a bullish outlook amidst the market's overall, overall bearish trend. Um, says bearish trend, I don't know about that. I think it's a blip in the radar. We'll wait and see. Similarly, Radix marks a notable increase of 37.4%, unscoring the volatility and dynamic nature of the crypto market. What about the poor old XRP bag holders? I mean, they didn't get any love out of that last pump. Oh, boy. All right. Moving on, speaking of Solana. Well, in blockchain and crypto news, there's been a very exciting turn of events for Solana holders or hodlers through the week. Sol has experienced a significant surge, eclipsing Ethereum for a time with a remarkable 12% rise and crossing the $200 mark, hinting at the potential for new record highs. The increase in Solana's trading volume to $3.79 billion, fueled by the recent meme coin mania, places it ahead of Ethereum's underscoring a pivotal moment in market dynamics. Um, yeah, that was that article was a few days ago, so it has retracted a little bit since then. Anyhow, Solana's DeFi landscape is thriving, evidenced by an 80% rise in TVL over the past month, signaling heightened confidence in the network. This surge is predominantly attributed to the viral traction of meme coins, such as Book of Meme, Boom, which astonishing, astonishingly achieved 1.45 billion market cap shortly after its launch. Is that sustainable? Meme coins? Ooh, wait and see. It's a dangerous game to play. Anyhow, the role of whales in Solana's ecosystem is substantial, with substantial hodlers influencing the price by cashing in on the upsurge. For instance, the whale known as BU6N2Z recently transferred 200,000 sold to Binance, retaining a notable sum both in their wallet and state. Oh, boy, that's a lot. Amid Solana's success story, challenges persist with network congestion and transaction issues, yet the bullish trend continues, pushing Solana to become the fourth largest crypto mark by market cap at the time of this article going to air. Investors and traders are keenly observing these developments, utilising analytics platforms like Look On Chain to stay ahead in the fast-paced crypto market. Yes, I was looking very closely at my bag, thinking to to flip a bit of a percentage there, and then what do you know, the whole prices all came down again. So yes, I'll wait and see a bit longer. Myself, not financial advice, do your own research, blah, blah, blah. All right, moving on in Upland news. Now, this could be huge, it could be awesome, it could be terrible, who knows? But Upland has announced the Share and Build Airdrop series ahead of the Sparklet token launch. Interesting. The airdrop series is designed to engage the Upland community and Web3 enthusiasts. Um, basically, we're looking to onboard a whole heap more people there, I would imagine. The Spark token, integral for acquiring digital land and in-game assets within Upland, at least to build and construct them and whatnot, will soon bridge to Sparklet, making it tradable outside the platform. The move expands the, expands the Spark token's utility 
a significant step for the over 130,000 spark holders and nearly 300,000 virtual landowners in Upland. The airdrop's initial phase called Social Engagement Rewards introduces a new social media dynamic. Participants can earn points by interacting with Upland, Sparklet and Spark on Twitter over a three-week campaign. These points will be convertible to Spark within Upland with the earning potential tied to the engagement level of their content. Each airdrop chapter completed rewards participants with a unique Block Explorer NFT in Upland and collecting five chapter Block Explorers will earn a special Upland exclusive NFT. Dirk Bluth, Upland's, one of the Upland's co-founders and co-CEO, expresses his excitement about the innovative, emphasising its alignment with Upland's vision to cult, 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 what's that word? Cultivate, I can't read me unwritten. An active Web3 ecosystem and reward community involvement. Yeah, it is going to be heavily based on Twitter. Um, I mentioned this on one of the other podcast shows. Anything to do with airdrops, just be really careful of what you're clicking on. Make sure it's official links and yes, double... Double check everything um, because it can be very greasy indeed. All right, moving on. In other metaverse news, we have Paris Hilton's foray into Roblox with her Sliving Land, another one of those horrible names. Well, she set a new precedent in the metaverse advertising world, amassing an equivalent of $60 million in traditional advertising revenue from over 3.2 million visits since its launch. This massive engagement underscores the power of virtual platforms like Roblox, which boasts over 71 million daily active players. Holy moly. And as lucrative advertising spaces are in there, of course, that money flows on. Sliving Land success highlighted in a comprehensive analysis by 1111 Media and Geek demonstrates the appeal of avatar customization and interactive experiences in attracting a broad audience. Hilton's ventures into the metaverse include previous success and her investment in story protocol, signifying her influential role in shaping the future of digital interaction and property ownership within these virtual worlds. Obviously, um, it should be pretty obvious that this kind of stuff is not really my cup of tea, but good on Paris, um, making some bank. And it seems like for that many people to get involved over a period of time, it must have been pretty engaging. So, very cool. All right, moving on. We got three AI news articles to cover this week because I couldn't decide which one I wanted to choose. So I thought, bugger it, I'll do all three. They seem pretty interesting. So first up, uh, Apple is reportedly in discussions with Alphabet Inc.'s Google to utilize Google's Gemini generative artificial intelligence tech on iPhone, in iPhones, aiming to integrate AI features into its flagship devices. These ongoing negotiations might allow Apple to license Gemini for future iPhone software enhancements. The company had previously explored the possibility of incorporating OpenAI's ChatGPT, backed by Microsoft Corporation, into its products. Although the talks are only in the preliminary stages with no finalised agreement, Apple's engagement with Google alongside its existing partnership, making Google the default search engine in Safari, underscores Apple's evolving AI strategy. This move comes as Apple seeks to enhance its AI offerings amidst competition from tech giants like Samsung and Google, who have already introduced AI features into their devices. Apple CEO Tim Cook hinted at forthcoming announcements related to the company's generative AI plans amid shifts in resource allocation from electric vehicle development to AI. The spotlight on generative AI has intensified since OpenAI's ChatGPT debut prompting a flurry of tech innovations across the sector. Yeah, I mentioned this several times through this show. I create create this show with the use of ChatGPT and DALI. Um, I have a lot of fun doing that. It's a lot of fun playing with these devices. Being able to do this sort of stuff directly on my phone, that is a game changer, absolutely. All right, moving on. Another important one here, another important event in AI news. Unis, a pioneering blockchain-based artificial intelligence messaging service developed by Unis Lab, is making strides in the healthcare sector. Founded by medical professionals and academics from Korean medical schools, Unis aims to transform early di- disease diagnosis, treatment and surgical processes through AI. The service, which analyzes users' conversations and voice data to assess their health and provide personalized healthcare solutions, seeks to extend high-quality medical services to underserved 
populations and integrate with leading robotic surgical systems like Da Vinci and Mako. My stepfather actually is having an operation just as we speak with that Da Vinci machine. So best of luck to you out there, Pete. Uh, by leveraging blockchain technology, Unis builds a secure medical database that enhances patient hospital connections and enables targeted advertising for the healthcare industry. The initiative, which focuses on expanding access to healthcare and ensuring compliance with international legal standards, represents a significant step towards global healthcare democratisation and innovation. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this plays out in the future with things like um, I've got my fitness tracking device here that I wear, um, merging that with AI and being able to track these things, you know, being able to get discounts on health insurance and whatnot, who knows, or alerts for your doctor. It all seems very, very interesting indeed. And lastly, but still in AI news, the integration of AI and blockchain is setting the stage for a revolution across a number of industries, enhancing the way we manage and interact with data. With AI's ability to make smart decisions for blockchain secure, immutable ledger, these technologies are forging a future where digital interactions are more secure, more efficient and more trustworthy. Gartner's research predicts a bright future for AI software with a forecasted spend of nearly 300 billion by 2027. This surge is significantly marked by the rise of generative AI software expected to claim 35% of the AI software market by 2027, up from 8.8% in 2023. Such growth underscores the critical role that AI technologies are playing across the sectors, ushering in a new era of innovation. AI and blockchain's convergence ensures that AI operates on a high quality, untampered data set, enhancing both the security of blockchain transactions and the efficiency of AI predictions. This symbiotic relationship has started, has already started to manifest in supply chain management, financial tra transactions and medical data processing, as we just mentioned, promising transformative changes across various domains. Absolutely. The fusion of AI and blockchain not only guarantees a leap in operational efficiency, but also addresses key ethical considerations such as data privacy, accountability and bias prevention. However, of course, the amalgamation of these technologies also presents new legal and regulatory challenges, necessitating updated laws and governance models to foster responsible innovation. Yes, you can imagine things like that in the wrong hands. It could all go very badly very quickly. Anyhow, in conclusion, AI and blockchain together offer a pathway to a future characterised by intelligent systems that are both reliable and transparent. With careful ethical considerations and regulations, this powerful combination can significantly benefit humanity, transforming how we interact with technology and each other. Yes, I can't wait. I'm absolutely fascinated to see how this all plays out as somebody who's diving more and more into the use of AI for even just basic things in life. Very fascinated indeed. All right, and I don't know if it's bad news or what, but in NFT news, Starbucks has announced the discontinuation of its Odyssey NFT beta program with a deadline for its members to complete any remaining journeys by March 25th. So you've got about a week left. The company stated its intention to evolve the program and prepare for future developments, indicating an end to the Starbucks Odyssey beta program to facilitate this preparation. Uh, the official closure is set for March 31st, with the Odyssey Discord server ending on March 19th, which is pretty much bang on today. Um, Steve Kuznetsky, or however you say it, the NFT program's lead, expressed uncertainty about his future following the termination of the program, but acknowledged the positive experience of working with Starbucks. The company assured that it would consider the NFT community's interests and its and it is exploring ways for its members to connect in the future. Starbucks plans to transition the Odyssey marketplace to the Nifty marketplace, allowing for continued trading of Odyssey stamps. Additionally, Odyssey level one members or higher will receive a final benefit via email at month's end. Um, yeah, I hope they stick with it. Um, this sort of stuff with uh, rewards and whatnot with NFTs, it's, it's where everything's heading. So maybe they didn't get the response they were happening or they were hoping for, or maybe they had some initial teething problems. Have to wait and see. And in Web3 gaming news, in a recent interview with Can Pickak, head of Elderoon, Turkey's leading Web3 gaming studio, uh, someone shared, or well, he shared, exciting insights into the potential impact of the upcoming Bitcoin halving on the thriving world of Web3 gaming. 
Pickaxe discussed Eldarune's groundbreaking approach, seamlessly blending captivating narratives with cutting edge blockchain tech, and highlighted the studio's remarkable success powered by their innovative Elder token and the integration of NFT assets across their diverse gaming titles. With ambitious, plan ambitious plans for expansion and enhancement, including broader blockchain integration and community engagement, intense initiatives, Eldarune is poised to lead the charge in shaping the future of Web3 gaming. Pickaxe's infectious optimism shines through as he predicts a vibrant future for the industry characterized by broader adoption, advanced play to earn models, enhanced interoperability and dynamic community governance. That all sounds very familiar from if you're from the upland kind of scenario or background. As the Web3 gaming landscape continues to evolve, Pickaxe anticipates a thrilling revival of the NFT market, injecting even more excitement and opportunity into this dynamic sector. All right, now on to the Mitsudaverse news. We have a bit of a tragic incident in Melbourne just recently. A man has died after falling from a hot air balloon and landing in a suburban street. Paramedics responded to the scene on Albert Street in Preston early in the morning where the man was declared deceased. Emergency services, including SES crews and firefighters, rushed to the scene with power lines strewn across the road and road closures in place. The incident occurred as the balloon was flying over the area and police are investigating the cir circumstances surrounding the fall. While the death is not considered suspicious, a report will be prepared for the coroner. And interestingly, or maybe scarily, this is not the first serious incident involving hot air balloons in Melbourne, highlighting the inherent, to, inherent risks associated with this mode of transportation. You, I wouldn't get up in one of those things for, uh, I was gonna say a million, but for a million I might risk it for a biscuit, but yeah, well. Not for me, no, thank you. Um, condolences to his family, of course. All right, in New Zealand meets sort of us news, emergency services responded to a hazardous substance incident in Kingsland, Auckland, prompting a significant deployment of police, fire and ambulance crews to the New North Road. One person was transported to Auckland Hospital in a moderate condition following the incident. Fire and emergency crews swiftly addressed the situation with eight crews on site to remove and neutralise the unnamed hazardous substance by early afternoon. Authorities have implemented cordons and evacuated nearby homes and businesses as a precautionary measure. Motorists were advised to expect a laser or avoid the area. This incident underscores the importance of prompt emergency responses and ongoing vigilance in handling hazardous materials. Last week in the New Zealand meat service, we had floods and this week, what do we got? Uh, unnamed hazardous substance smells very um, Jesse Pinkman to me, who knows? All right, and lastly, but not leastly, in the Japanese Meat Service news, the planned budget for cherry blossom viewing in Japan this spring has slightly decreased due to inflation, with people expected to spend an average of 6,872 yen per person. Um, a simple way to do the conversion on that is to just divide by 10, I believe. So it's about 68 bucks, 70 bucks, something like that which is down 0.9% from last year. Rising prices have pr prompted cost-saving measures such as reducing spending or refraining from trips altogether for 57.8% of respondents. While more individuals plan to enjoy the blossoms this year, many opt for nearby locations during the daytime, reflecting cautious spending amid the ongoing impact of inflation. Yeah, if you're ever in Japan for cherry blossom season, you've got to get out there and get amongst it. Absolute madness if you go to some of the parks um, where all the young kids go. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Anyhow, and that's the beat for this Blockweb week and a glimpse into some of what's currently making news inside, around and outside of the Metaverse and in the Meat Suitiverse this week. If you'd like to get yourself involved in any of the Upland Down Under Metatainment Productions or if you have an Upland NFT or Metaverse product service or event to promote and send me, Ben68, a DM or get yourself into the NBA server which is linked in the description. On that note, see you later.